Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, we're going to be doing a concrete apron right out in front of the garage doors and the main entry door to the house. Now, you can't see the garage doors here because they got them, they got them all plywooded off. This is the middle of the winter, so they got this space all tented off and heated for us so we can get this thing done. And what we're going to show you in this video is I'm going to show you how we form this thing, how we, how we get it all prepped and get it ready to pour. So we're going to be putting the forms up. We actually got a big trench drain we're going to be putting in this. We got about just about 30 feet of trench drain going in here. We got two inch styrofoam we're going to be putting down with a matter rebar getting it ready to pour the concrete in. So this will be part one where we get it all ready and, and, and prepped and then part two will be when we come back and pour it. We got a real special finish going on this apron. So make sure you come back and watch that part two video to see the kind of finish we're putting on it. So the first thing Luke did was he got the form screwed together. You know, he got them put in place, got them screwed together. And now we're measuring out from the garage just how far they want this thing. They want it seven feet out. And this apron, I mean, they want a nice apron here because they're going to be putting radiant heat in it. And they want this to be heated in the winter so it'll melt all the snow and ice and everything. And then for the rest of the driveway... They're just going to do a reclaim asphalt for the rest of the driveway. But going into the garage, they wanted a nice seven foot concrete apron. So that's what we're doing now. We're getting the forms up. Luke's going to cut that one last piece, get it in place. Darren and I are starting to run a string so we can get this thing straight. And then we're going to pin it with our metal pins. You can see I'm setting up my laser now. We're going to use that laser to set the, all the forms to grade and shoot our grades on the concrete. The builder there, that guy you just saw, the builder, he want, he's the one that hired me. He wants to grade about a half an inch below the concrete floor, the garage floor. And then it's going to slope it down an inch to the trench drain. The trench drain is going right in the center of this thing. You can see those two metal pins kind of in the center that's where the trench drains going so I'm marking out all my grades on the wall and then I'm gonna shoot the top of the form we're gonna put the top of the form right to grade we'll snap a chalk line on there where I'm marking it and then we'll just wet screed everything when we go to pour this thing I like that Topcon laser that's my RL H5B um, if you guys are new here that's my self leveling laser that's the one I recommend for you know construction workers, concrete workers, that's a, a really simple laser to use and, and learn how to use. So I, I got a link for that down in the description if you guys want to check that out. Now Darren, Darren and I are just going and setting the forms grade. So I'm holding the grade stick with the receiver on it. And the receiver, when it, when it hits that laser beam from the laser, it has a solid beep and that tells us it's it's the grade we want and Darren's just screwing the forms to grade with those metal pins we put in. Luke's starting to lay out some of the trench drain. Let me don't let me know down in the comments how many of you guys have installed trench drains? Um, do you like installing them? We we install, I don't know, we install a handful of them every year. They're okay. They're just a little time consuming to install, but it's not too bad. They're numbered too. This this system here is numbered, so the top of the the top of the trench drain is en will end up being level, and the pitch is built right into the drain itself. So we're going. We got a number one drain here going all the way to number eight, I believe. They're about three feet three inches long, something like that. And they also have an arrow on them, and the arrow points in the direction the water is going to flow. So you just got to pay attention. They only go together one way, so you, you really can't mess them up, I guess. Now what I'm doing is I'm finding I'm finding the one edge of that drain. So we measured out the, where we want the center of the drain, and then we measured over another two and a half inches. And that way we can use the string line. You can see we're mixing up some concrete now. Just a bag mix, just add water. That's as simple as it is for, for mixing concrete. 
we're going to use that concrete to put under the trench drains you'll see here in a second so we can set it right in place and set it right to grade this is the way we like doing it there's umpteen different ways you can set these trench drains but we like setting them in a little bed of concrete so they're they're really firm and they're they won't move when you go to pour the the concrete apron around them so we'll put a little pad down where we're going to begin and then where the trench drains connect together the seams we'll put another pad down and then we'll set the trench drain right in the wet concrete we got that string set right to grade and right on that that one edge of the trench drain so we can keep it straight yeah you can see kind of get the idea of what we're doing now and we like to leave an opening you know we like to leave an airspace under the middle of the trench drain so when we do go pour the concrete we can vibrate the concrete right under that so it's one solid piece so this is just a little bit of a process there's nothing really fast about this you go one piece at a time you get it close if anything you want to leave the height of it just a little bit high quarter inch high or so that way you can tap it down in in place as you put more and more in because they kind of lock together they have a little bit of a locking system on each end and if you tried to make each one perfect then they're just going to move on you a little bit as you as you put each one in place so you're better off leaving them a little bit high putting a few up and then coming back to where you started and start just tapping it down in place before the concrete gets too too hard now you can see how we're lining them up pretty good on at this angle so the trench drain is going to you know it's going to catch any water any rain water and they also you know up above where the roof the roof is kind of sloped this same way so any water that comes off the roof will go right in the trench drain and then you know drain down towards that farthest end you see here we'll end up having to put a drain pipe we'll butt a drain pipe from that end right there where I am now up to the board and then they can they can pipe out the rest of the drainage afterwards so you can see how I'm going back there and I'm just tapping that as we go making sure it's straight making sure it's set right to grade and then I, I got a little tiny level I'll make sure it's all plumb too so this thing's like I said seven feet wide it's about 31 32 feet long it's gonna have radiant heat in it they're gonna want to heat it so they don't have to shovel any snow off it how many of you guys live in an area where you would need to heat something like this instead of throwing salt on it you know I live in Maine this is Maine right here so this is gonna see winter months you know for about three months it's gonna see quite a bit of snow and ice so it's gonna be pretty convenient for these people just to turn on a switch and just have that stuff melt instead of having to go out and shovel it it's gonna end up being six inches thick we're gonna use a we'll use a 4,000 psi concrete when we do go ahead and pour this thing so we got coming up make sure you stay to the end of the video we're gonna I'm gonna show you we're gonna put some two inch styrofoam in here and then we're gonna tie a matter rebar in here and then on the next video you'll see how the plumbers the heating guy tied in the, the radiant heat and then you'll get to see how we pour it and that special finish we're putting on it you can see I'm making sure it's plumb now Luke and Darren are mixing up some more concrete we got we're using a mixture of concrete we're using quick uh plain just ready mixed concrete and then we got some of the fast setting concrete so we'll go one bag of plain to a half a bag of fast and it just sets it up a little bit quicker that way you know no one gets in here after we're done and while the concrete's still wet and and walks on it or or taps it we want to make sure the concrete's good and firm before we leave so when we're using a little bit faster setting mix 
You can see I keep going back and double checking it, making sure it's perfect. I want to make sure that top stays right in line with the string so there's no dips, no humps in that drain. We got one more piece to set after this. You can see it's not really hard, it's just a matter of taking your time, going one piece at a time, not hurrying, and making sure everything's straight, making sure everything's set to grade. That's the most important thing. You gotta establish your grades. And like I said, the trench drain, the top of the trench drain is gonna be an inch lower than the outside form, and an inch lower than the grade going into the garage, so there'd be an inch slope down to that trench drain. And that's about three and a half feet on each side. So that's a little over a quarter per foot, which is going to definitely shed the water. They won't have any water sitting on this thing. So we're getting the last piece set. I'm just double checking, making sure the concrete's pushed up against the drain so it's locking the bottom of the drain in place. And then once that concrete hardens, that drain's not going to move at all. It's got to be perfect for me. I'm pretty fussy, so that's why I keep going back and double checking it. Now what I'm doing is I'm measuring out for the styrofoam. And the styrofoam is going to help keep the heat from the radiant heat from from just uh, you know going down into the ground. So it's going to insulate the ground. And the radiant heat's going to want to rise and melt the snow and ice off the concrete versus heat the ground below it. So we'll just get this cut and in place. We don't want to go completely up to the trench drain because when we pour the concrete, we want the concrete to be able to vibrate that concrete down under the gap we left under the drain. So it locks everything in place when we get done pouring it. You can see how we got the drain pipe now from the end of the trench drain out to the board. And it's got a sleeve on it that you can't see at this angle. So when we take the board off, they'll be able to slide another piece of drain pipe right into that one and just continue it on out and bury it. I'm up there cutting in some little pieces around another drain pipe that's up in that corner. And Luke and Darren are just finishing up the bigger pieces. We do, you know, we do quite a bit of forming and prep work throughout the year. Do you guys do both forming, prep work, and pouring concrete for you guys who do concrete? Um, I don't. We don't really mind doing it. It's just a matter of getting prepared to do it, and and obviously knowing what you're doing and what you're up against. You just got to make sure you charge, you know, appropriately for your experience level and what you're doing. There's not. Not everyone can set those trench drains if they've never done it. So now that you guys have seen us do it, that should give you a little bit better idea of how to do it in case you've never done one or you get asked to do one. You know, I like, we usually charge by the lineal foot for that. And it's just, you know, you got to add up your time. If you haven't done it before, then you're probably not going to charge as much as someone like me who's done it multiple times. And has more experience doing it, but it just comes down to what you need to get for your rate, you know, to do it and make some money on it. So that's just about it for the styrofoam. We got that in place. Now, the next step for us will be you know, we got everything to grade, styrofoam's in, now we got to get the matter rebar in. We're going to tie the matter rebar about a foot on center this this long way because that's what they're going to tie the radiant heat tubes to and then the short way the three foot six way will go about two feet on center that way I'm also going to be using a fiber glass reinforcement fiber mesh in the concrete mix itself so it's going to kind of have a double reinforcement in it We've done, you know, over the years, we've done concrete driveways like this too. But I don't, for some reason, they didn't want to go out any further with the with the apron here in front of the garage. This is all they wanted was seven feet. They have a lot of driveway here. They really could have gone and done a lot more if they wanted to. 
This is right on the ocean too. This was about an hour and a half drive from our shop. So it's a good little distance away from us. That And we, you know, we'll go most days. We're an hour, an hour and a half. You know, we don't generally like to travel much more than a couple hours for work. Because we don't really need to. We have plenty around locally. But for regular customers like this, you know, we'll travel wherever we need to. Do you guys do the same thing? You know, let me know down there. How far do you guys travel for work? Especially for regular customers. I mean, you don't really want to say no. They're kind of counting on you if you're a normal sub for them. You see, Luke's using what we call a little yo-yo, that hand that hand tire is a yo-yo and then we got some wire ties there so he just loops them together then twists it and it ties that rebar right together when we get done we'll have some you'll see we're going to be putting some what we call slab bolsters or chairs underneath the rebar to hold it up into the concrete a couple inches Yeah, you got some pretty good idea of what that yo-yo looks like. And then I'm just, we got those twist ties. They got loops on each end. So you just bend them down under the rebar, put the two loops together, hook the yo-yo in the loops, and then just spin it around, and it ties the rebar nice and tight. See, Luke got a little bit of a curve there on his. <laughs> Usually we like to make them a little straighter. Oh, there he straightened it out a little bit. But that'll help reinforce the concrete quite a bit. It's a pretty good mat right there. Now remember, we're going to do a special finish on this, so make sure you come back and watch the next video coming up after this one. So you can see just how we poured this, how we sloped the concrete to the drain, what slump we use, and then what type of finish we actually did put on this. It's going to be a pretty cool finish. And again, it's the middle of the winter here. This is uh, this is February here in Maine. February is a really cold month, but the builder, he's also got some guys. If you can see kind of in the background off to the right, you can see like a stone, a stone finish going up that concrete wall. He's got some guys over there working on that block work, that, that stone work. And that's all tented off too. So they've been working in there all winter doing that stone work. There, Luke and I are going to finish tying that up. We don't tie a lot of rebar, I guess, with what we do. We just, you know, we tie enough. So that's, we just use those yo yo's. I'm sure there's other ways that are faster. You know, they got battery operated rebar tires, they got guys that just like to use wire and pliers, you know, snippers, and they'll snip the wire and twist the wire. You know, we just we just use these. If we were doing rebuy every single day, we'd probably have a little different system, but this is plenty fast enough for how we do it. Now Luke's tying a piece of rebuy on an angle where those two outside corners of that, that little pillar are because it's, it's pretty likely to crack right there. We're gonna put a expansion contraction joint off those two little corners also but that angled piece of rebar like that will just if it does want still want to crack there that's going to just help hold that crack together nice and tight so it doesn't open up I'm reeling up the string we're all done with that and get that out of the way and our next step here is Luke's got those slab bolsters those those are two inch slab bolsters, so we're getting the rebar up off the ground. Those hold it nice and firm and in place. And then we're also going to where the seams of that trench drain go together, they, where they butt together. We're going to caulk those seams and make sure that there's no uh, water leaking through those seams down into the ground. So that's always a good, good idea. And We'll just use a regular caulking gun, a caulking tube with some silicone caulking, and then I'll put the bead in there, and then Luke will come behind me and just 
smooth it out with his finger. That's as simple as that is. That way it'll be good and dry when we come back to pour the concrete. And we gotta get a few more, a few more of those slab bolsters in there to get that rebar up. Yeah, you can see I got my, I now I got my caulking gun, got, got the tuba caulking. And I'm gonna go to town here. There is a pretty good seam there. I mean, it, we those do butt together, but it's it, it's still a you know a, a, quite a good little seam there. I wouldn't want to just leave it myself. As you can see, it only takes a couple minutes to do it anyway just makes it a little bit nicer job when you're all done. Darren's in charge of cutting everything, so he's been the one cutting all the rebar. Those those slab bolsters you see him putting in, they come five feet long, so he's been cutting them in half. He's just using a pair of big bolt cutters out there. though. They're like three-foot bolt cutters, and they're big enough to cut that, that rebar. That's three-eighths rebar. Now we put that plywood in there so when we do pour the concrete, we don't get any concrete down in the drain. That way if you need to drag some concrete right over the top of it, you can just drag it right across the top. Then when, when everything's all done, when the slab's done, you, they got these black metal grates that go in there that make it look really sharp. So that's it guys, that's how we get this thing ready, this concrete apron. Uh, make sure you come back and watch the next video, and thanks for watching.